This week, it flooded twice already. But I got flooded 100 or 200 times a year. Before, there weren't so many floods, but now it's so often, twice a week even. People here tend to take flooding in their stride. But in the past few years, Jakarta has suffered the worst floods in three centuries, causing some 450,000 people to leave their homes. In this Jakarta neighborhood, called Chawangdua, Mariana, who like many people here uses only one name, kept her home. But she suffered an even greater loss. Five years ago, her 22-year-old son, Rashid, died in the flood. I climbed into the attic through the ceiling. Then people cut a hole to get up on the roof, and I heard Rashid joking around and yelling for a cigarette. Soon after, his brother came to tell me Rashid had drowned. In this urban area of 25 million people, killer floods like the one that took Rashid's life are the result of many factors, says the environmental advisor to the UN development program in Indonesia, Alex Hakens. They already have many development issues like waste management, overpopulation, unplanned construction, which are really big here in Jakarta, and then we get the climate change on top of it. With heavier rainfall piling onto a complex tangle of urban development, some experts, like environmental scientist Andes Granlund, consider conditions here to be a preview of global climate change. What's happening here is things that will also happen in other areas in the world, but later on. Looking at the issues faced by the Indonesian capital now, he says, may provide clues on how to adapt to climate change in the future. An awareness bell will ring here, hopefully a little bit earlier, and we can use that information for the rest of the world. Back in Mariana's neighborhood in Jakarta, Ahmed Fadli of the Indonesian Red Cross is raising awareness by teaching people how to better understand the threat of flooding. We are not just teaching them water rescue. We are also teaching them that this is not an ordinary situation that they have to accept. The goal is to understand that when disaster strikes, they can lose their livelihood, their income and their home. If they were prepared for the disaster, they can minimize the loss and the risk. One problem faced by the authorities here is that many people are often willing to accept even extreme risk rather than being relocated to safer grounds. Kampung Melayu is one of Jakarta's most flood-prone neighborhoods. We asked Armi Susandi of Indonesia's National Council on Climate Change to show us how this community is adapting to the constant threat of flooding. Here, the local community leader keeps track of water measurements in various locations to anticipate flooding. A pump siphons off excess water during the rainy season. And a cell phone text alert system is in place for when the community needs to be warned to evacuate. It is quite effective for emergency response, but not for a long-term solution. We need to develop a more structured approach in order to address the flood problem. For example, we need better ways to disseminate information about the water measurements, regular dredging of the river, and increasing height of the embankments to keep the water from overflowing. Experts like Susandi warn that Jakarta presents some very tough challenges to planners. One among many complicating factors is that parts of the city are actually sinking. This is because of groundwater mining. The extraction of water from underneath the city's soil is causing what experts call land subsidence. And as the soil sinks, runoff water collects in the depressions, and tidal flows from the Java Sea 
flood ever larger parts of the city. By the year 2050, even the city's international airport may end up submerged. We are living in an environment where the number of heavy weather systems are affecting us. And when they affect that type of area where you, it starts to sink, then it creates vulnerability that we cannot cope with. Twice vulnerable than Bangkok in the main factor. Even so, recent data shows that it's not only Jakarta, but large parts of Southeast Asia that are vulnerable to global warming. A Singapore-based group called Economy and Environment Programme for Southeast Asia, or IPSI, has devised a map to help visualize climate threats to the region. But that's only a start, says the program's director, Erminia Francisco. We should not stop with the knowledge that we are vulnerable. We need to do something more to come up with really concrete plans. It's a huge challenge, adapting to life under new climate conditions. But it's one that's likely to be crucial for future development. Adaptation is uh, adjusting the way you live to a new climate. In terms of running your country, in terms of managing your city, in terms of how do you uh, produce your uh, crops uh, as a farmer. It's a message that's not lost on people here. People living with the increased dangers of flooding and with the certain knowledge that the time for action is now.